Sinistry reading between Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love, so I left a little bit of a cliffhanger. But because I was messing around with the live on readings.psychicsgold.com, it ended up kicking out of YouTube around eight minutes, so I made that private, and then it kicked out of Facebook around 35, so I downloaded that. I'm going to uh, stitch them together. We are streaming live on YouTube right now, but this live will come down, and I'll stitch the two together, so the Kurt Cobain, Courtney Love, Sinistry video will be one on YouTube, and it'll have have the part two that's streaming right now on Facebook and I did go ahead and um I did go ahead and make it where let's see here it's so funny that it's doing that with the display capture I did go ahead and make it where let's see I, I lost my train of thought, you guys, but let's get back into what I was saying yesterday because it was good that I had to wait overnight, even though it was the first time I did the celebrity synastry where I was pretty clear, concise, and quick with it. It, um, yeah, it just wanted to do what it wanted to do. I'm going to go ahead and click out of here. Oh, see? It showed you really quick right there that it does indeed work. So if you want to go watch on readings.psychicsgold.com, there's other advisors that will be going live as well. And again, that's where you can order a private reading with me. So like once I leave here, you can order an instant one or you can leave me a message and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Here's how you do the messages, the questions. Um, you can do it straight from there or you can go down here and submit it here. This, this way you can actually upload, you know, if you want to send me a video or a picture, you know, a lot of times my clients send me a photo of whoever they're inquiring about so I can pick up on the energy more. It's up to you however you like to do it. But let's go ahead and get back into uh, Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain because it's still early on a Friday night and I haven't been out in a few weeks. I've been working on the computer a lot. So I'm contemplating between going out and staying in and just using my energy to edit videos because I have a lot of them coming out for you guys. But um, it was good that I had to wait overnight because I realized overnight that Courtney does see she has a Venus-Mars conjunction here, which I hadn't noticed in the video last night because I was thinking about how Kurt's Mercury is square her Venus and her Mars. And it is possible that they could be like her being uh, square her Venus-Mars conjunction. A Venus-Mars conjunction is a really beautiful placement. It's fairly common. Venus and Mars are often near each other. And, and near the sun as well. Usually they're only a one or two signs away from the sun. So like with a Cancer sun, like Courtney, you see her Venus and Mars are in Gemini. It's only one sign away. Um, not They're usually not that close together, but it is quite co common. And what a Venus-Mars conjunction means is a love marriage. It's a lot like having a Venus in Pisces, which I believe that Kurt has as well. Yeah, his Venus is in Pisces. So when your Venus is exalted in Pisces, you're going to usually, as a man, get like a really fantastic... They, well, they say like just like a woman who... Someone like Courtney who has um, these extreme artistic capabilities and musical capabilities or... Well, she has a Libra rising, you know, so someone who's really beautiful or that, you know, everyone sees as really beautiful or feels that is really beautiful. And so what we're getting into yesterday, though, was about this Lilith. I'm going to go back to where the birth times are not. And then we'll get actually into the moon um, moon aspects a little because we didn't do that yesterday either. But with her Lilith being square, his Mercury as well, I wonder... Let's look at her birth chart. Her Lilith is, oh, see, her Lilith is over here in that Sagittarius area opposite her Venus-Mars conjunction. So she Lilith is the bad girl reputation. And where I had left off yesterday before it cut me off is that, um, you know, women with Lilith like on their ascendant, which is just like, let's go back to your ascendant is here. That's just like who you are. Like, hello, I'm me. I'm a Libra rising, I am, and so is Courtney Love, and so is Britney Spears, and so is, um, what's her name, uh, Anna Nicole Smith, like a Libra rising in itself can be a little bit of like, um, not everyone's going to be blonde, but like that blonde bombshell kind of look, I'm not saying like I'm a blonde bombshell, but you know, at certain days I can have that kind of a look, because I have a Libra rising, so, um, with a, a Libra ascendant, you know, Libra is beauty. So, for instance, my astrologer had pointed out to me, like, it's part of the reason that I went into aesthetics, skincare, is because of my Libra rising. So, when you put someone's Lilith, now Courtney's Lilith is on her third house cusp, but if you put a woman's Lilith on her midheaven, for, or her, 
ascendant for instance this is how she comes off to the world so Lilith is like if you've ever heard of like the Lilith festival um, it's like women power but it's that you know raw it's like the wife before Adam um, Eve's wife <laughs> Eve's, Adam's wife before Eve they say was Lilith like she's raw feminine power comes from the mud like there's a lot of um, mythology about her and as an asteroid she's quite mysterious she even can represent the unknown but they do say in a man's chart she represents like the kind of woman that he really is drawn to but that you know he might not think that it's socially acceptable to be with or it's the kind of woman that yeah like he would have an affair with so um with her Lilith being on her third house cusp like right around her second house third house is communication second house is your voice so this is why her music kind of has that like trashy but sexy raw feeling to it you know that would be her Lilith like right between her second and third house using her second house her voice to communicate through her third house now a woman who's Lilith for example is on the midheaven is going to have a lot of sort of a, a she could be I'm I'm real picky about country music to begin with and she's pretty but to me she's just kind of boring but kind of in maybe a way that I would see myself as boring or or plain because my my Lilith is on the midheaven so maybe she's reflecting that back to me and it has nothing to do with her but there's a lot of women with Lilith on the midheaven that you know it's like if we go into a meek mild career people are going to be like you're so beautiful. Why are you sitting behind a desk? But if we go and we show off our beauty, people are going to be like, oh, she just wants attention. She's just putting herself out there. So just to give you an idea of how Lilith can op operate very strongly, especially in a female's chart, now we go look at how Courtney's Lilith is being aspected to Kurt's planets. They're squares. So even though I think that Kurt Cobain was very open-minded and um, not judgmental and, and probably supportive of her, especially... You know, he, they were they challenged each other. You know, here with her Venus being in hard aspect to all these planets, but with Lilith, it's like this is where people. This is where I left off yesterday. Would kind of trash her or be like, why is he with her? Or she's you know she's kind of whatever. You know she's she's messing around and all this stuff. And they've said that about her then in post mortem. And I had gone into how she had defended herself and said in her. You know, that his intuition was so strong with that Pisces stellium. And I said I could really see that there. You know, and I didn't mean coming from a place like Aberdeen. Like, I grew up in a similar... I grew up pretty in the same state as him, but a similar type of um, culture. It's... Most people don't come out of there and do anything like he did. So, one thing I had noticed with his montage of Heck that actually Courtney had released to the public, a lot of his writing and stuff, is that he had written these to-do lists. And this is what I do you know, it's imagination, but Virgo, you have to, um, substantiate it. And I do think that maybe that's an, an inherent gift that we were taught growing up. Um, just having this sim similar, um, chart as him here with this Pisces and Virgo being in the opposite, um, natural placements and then Venus and Mercury being actually debilitated there. Hold up, hold up. I had a little, uh, little tickle in my throat, actually. I'm glad that it ended yesterday, even though this is going to drag on a little. But we'll get back to where I left off. So the, the crazy thing about Venus and Mercury being in his sixth house is that Mercury is debilitated there. That's your planet of communication. Like I said, how Courtney's third house is communication. Well, that's Gemini, and Mercury rules that third house in Gemini of communication. Um, so his Mercury is debilitated here. Um, he had to really work to use his voice and to get it out there. But with Venus there, Venus is beauty. Venus also rules the second house, which I, so it was the third house is Mercury. Venus is the second house, which is your voice. So, ha and Venus is exalted in Pisces. So he had a debilitated Mercury, but an exalted Pisces in the sixth house. So he was willing to do the work to develop that Mercury, you know, write things down with this opposition and with Pluto in the 12th this is a very psychic placement too so kind of going back to what we were saying about him and Courtney 
he's got Pluto in the 12th and he's got the stellium in Pisces and even though it's a sixth house and we really you know that's usually Virgo's house so we don't equate it with too much spirituality as astrologists um, this stellium in Pisces is going to overrule that and being an aspect to the sixth house to Pluto in the or I mean to, to the twelfth to Pluto in the twelfth the moon on Pluto in the twelfth is extremely psychic now Pluto in the twelfth people they may not realize that about themselves. Like, they may just go through life and things. Remember, Pluto also represents the 8th house of known secrets. So, someone with Pluto in the 12th, they're just going to be, like, claircognizant. The moon is like that, too. But the moon, it's going to be a little bit more like, and I know how everything clicks together. Um, they're just very informed at the very minimum. They don't even know how what they could tap into. So, anyways, when Courtney said, like, this story on the montage of Heck, I believe um, she said that Kurt... The one time she even thought about cheating, she was in like England or something and she got some guy's number and she even thought about calling um, Kurt had, t this was the night that he supposedly overdosed in um, the first time and take, had taken a bunch of pills and it was on the news and everything. So, but then people are saying, you know, that's not related, whatever, but that was her story, her version that I heard her, her say. So, um, and again, this is all educational purposes. Will it square his Mercury and Pluto? Um, there could have been great fear on his part, like Mercury in his mind of her cheating on him. That could have been a real substantial fear of his. Also, though, and also that's his Pluto in the 12th square, her Lilith. So if she was, I mean, aside from just his Pisces stellium of being very intuitive, um, and, uh, uh, moon and Cancer, which they both have that conjunction, and just having a Moon conjunction together is highly intuitive in ESP. I mean, these two, she wouldn't have been able to get w away with much, like she was saying. So, um, but the thing is, is that when people would talk trash about her and be like, oh, why are you with her? She's no good. You know, she's just out for whatever, whatever. He would defend her. So squares, you know, they're very powerful because he was still connected to her. So even though he might sometimes question square her Venus and Mars, um, actually, the I'm trying to like review what I said last night so I don't miss any of it. The place that he would de really defend her is with her north nodes. Now, it's said this kind of on the video that saved but um were they twin flames with having mars square mercury going both ways i would say that they're they're t possibly twin flames but if anything they're very 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 high level soulmates because what we don't know is if he had lived or not whether they would have actually divorced or not and i think that they were on the edge of that so for me whenever mars is square opposition it is a deal breaker I did say last night, you know, Mercury isn't actually officially on the list of that. But you put, like, Sun square Mercury, and um, the two can have a hard time coming together. Or Mercury could, like, after the relationship, really gossip and talk a lot of uh, smack about the Sun. So, I mean, Mercury square Mars, I just don't like to see any Mars squares are opposition. So they might have actually ended due to that. You know, due to his Mercury being square, her Venus Mars conjunction. It's part of, again, what made her amuse and stimulating to him in the first place. Um, but it, she might have just been too much for him. And again, it's a beautiful conjunction. It means a love society, right? When society's criticizing them and saying, like, I'm not saying that, that's better. But with the North held back, you know, if you actually see any South Node contact, Node comfort. Like, say maybe, like, my North Node is in Aries. So I'm really having to evolve in this life and go towards my own individual identity. But I also have a lot of things there that say my partner, my husband would be Aries. So the thing is, is like, how do you balance the two? Well, if some Aries comes along and he's got a bunch of planets on my south node, um, which is Libra, I might feel really comfortable or anybody who's squaring your north node or in opposition you have to be careful because you might feel stifled but you might get comfort from it but you have to make sure that you're still able to activate that north node in other ways or that they are helping you now the interesting thing i want to say about lilith really quick before we jump into the north nodes is that i don't see it a whole lot in functioning relationships most relationships i see whether like they're um, a two month a four month a one year a four year they have deal breakers or not you don't see Lilith a whole lot Lilith is a very mysterious asteroid we actually don't know a whole lot about her as astrologists I might see one or two here and there and they're usually more in like oh I grew up with a kid and he's really cute and we have pretty one aspect or two aspects so you don't like guys I mean in my marriage for example there was a lot of aspects and a lot of good and bad um, stuff which made us try to work through it for many years 
even though there was deal breakers and such. But um, there was no Lilith. And we had a lot of, like, I mean, that was probably one of the per people that I was most, you know, sexually close to in my life. And Lilith is a sexual planet, and so is Pluto. Like, Lilith square Pluto here, that's a lot of sexual chemistry between them, but something almost like that could never be satisfied and could create a lot of jealousy. So um, my point is, is that most relationships, I'm going to say, it doesn't really equate to, again, it's a mystery to us as astrologists. It doesn't really equate to like whether the couple will end up together or not. Like I say with a lot of aspects, you know, this is sort of the time frame of them or this is what it could smooth out or this is the damage it could do. With Lilith, it's kind of like a hit or miss. Like she's only, she only shows up maybe in 1% of the synastry charts that I run. She's not in most relationships, whether they're good, bad, short, long, you know, she's not really there. So I do feel like, there is some sort of primal slash like spiritual slash mystery to Lilith and to how she's going to affect two people. For me, I would say it's really going to vary based on the relationship in the bigger picture. So here I would say mostly for them, it was that was why people would talk a lot of trash about her or think that she wasn't good enough for Kurt is because of her Lilith being square, his Mercury and Pluto. And it would mess with his head a little bit. It would even make him wonder if he could trust her with the Pluto part. OK, I kind of already said that. So let's get into the North Node, her North Node trying his son, which is his identity. It's who he is, his personality, Pisces, day in and day out. He is this imaginative, caring, loving, unconditional love, um, creative uh, sensitive soul and her north node her life path i believe it's trying that i think it's actually it's in yeah cancer you know she has this like basically a stellium going on in cancer here trying his stellium in pisces um she where she was going was towards like family cancer's family so that was her north node that's like she wanted a family and like i can't say that for sure but like um Cancer on the midheaven, which, yeah, this is her midheaven. I have cancer on the midheaven, too. So cancer on the midheaven with planets there, like her goal, even though music came kind of easily for her, she had a decent career, and that's the other thing. Her Lilith is well-placed, and it's in opposition to her. Venus, Mars, conjunction in her north node. It's on her south node. I, I do feel like her career, maybe it wasn't like, I, I think she had a pretty solid career in herself. And Kurt, his son and his Mars, probably in general, was very... Where is his Mars? Is that also in Pisces? No. His Mars is in Scorpio. So his Mars completes kind of their Cancer Pisces trying over there in Scorpio. And again, I don't know if this got cut off yesterday. No, I think it was in there in the beginning. I was talking about Kurt's Mars being in his second house. But, um... So his... Mars in Scorpio and his son in Pisces creates a trine with her north node, like a full trine from the 2nd, 6th to the 10th. Uh, and these are the houses of, normally the second house is, is security and money, but it also can be family, like your established family, not so much like cancer is your home life with your family and kind of your nuclear family your siblings or the family you want to create that has children but the second house sorry that's my steam heater you guys but the second house is like that kind of that family you come from your lineage your your not necessarily your ancestors but like your grandparents your great-grandparents like that security kind of like generational wealth because second house is money it's security so his mars in the second house trined his son in the sixth house of work trined her north node in her midheaven um in cancer of career so this is how they were able to sort of have a work-life balance but it also brought a lot of security it also brought when she was headed towards her nor north node you know when she was doing her career things even if kurt might have been critical of those things he was supportive of them because his son and his personality and his mars and his actions in general just everything he did and thought were just in alignment with where she was going in life and very supportive of that and vice versa like when she was going towards her north node it was no threat to him you know it was very much in harmony so even if if her Lilith might mess with her head or what people say it's like at the end of the day this north node is a very high level soulmate you know once age you're gonna see it's kind of generational who's gonna be um sextile or trine it's gonna be like I think about six six to eight years apart is gonna be a 
Well, anyways, and yeah, so it's, um, so basically they didn't even need the generational thing because they're three years apart. So they were kind of in this place where their north nodes wouldn't really meet or contact, even though I do think his north node is in a friendly sign to hers. Yeah, his is in Taurus and hers is in Cancer. So they are sextile because three years apart is about two signs apart. So, yeah, their north nodes are sextile, maybe in a wider orb than five. That's why it doesn't show up here. And um, this is her IC trying his Mercury. So IC is your home life again. It's where her Lilith is in her south node. So he's just really able to communicate with her about the home, the family. This is, you know, why they could have established something in such a career where a lot of people don't. Now, would they have gone on and continued? Again, if not, I always blame the passion planets if there aren't any major divorce aspects. So it was going to be those Mars square Mercury's going both ways. And so to me that says... The thing about their chart is I love the trine with the sun, with their stelliums and Cancer and Pisces. Some people wouldn't call hers a stellium. That's okay because it's only like three planets in the north node. Some astrologers say it has to be like four or five planets. Kurt definitely has a stellium in Pisces. But anyways, so again, that's like when you have more than two planets because two planets is a conjunction basically. Um, but to kind of wrap this up, let's just kind of go over really quick. Oh, oh yeah, I was thinking this last night too. Her sun is conjunct his moon. Um, I'm going to make a video very soon, and I've made a few that I haven't posted, and I might have said this rant about sun-moon compatibility because I know that one of one of you was asking me on like the moon conjunction videos about sun-moon compatibility. Again, it's great for friendship. It's great for um, relationships for about four years. If there's no moon compatibility, it won't, um, it won't overpower that, but it definitely can... And make a nice like four or five year like a high school my high school sweetheart his son is trying my moon you know um, my moon was his moon was sextile my son but our moons were incompatible so it lasted you know like four years solid pretty solid ish anyways and then I had mentioned that her moon is conjunct his Jupiter I love this the moon is you know your peace your home your family your inner life and Jupiter is that benevolence he's also family in his own way like the structure the wealth the benevolence of family he's also education so he could teach her a lot of things, but like kind of that fun teacher, not like Saturn, who's like, you know, you have to do this and you have to do that and you need to write this paper. It's Jupiter's like makes learning fun kind of a thing. So I love to see that. It's a very, and Mars conjunct Jupiter. Any planet's personal like moon to Jupiter is just great for marriage. Now, does that mean it's going to hold the marriage together if there's divorce aspects? No, but it, it can definitely convince you to marry someone you have divorce aspects with. Um, and help it last longer than it would without um, a nice Jupiter, because Jupiter pretty much is marriage in, in the, you know, synastry. Moon trying Neptune. This is very spiritual. Again, this is another place where they had, um, you know, ESP telepathy. Maybe had a lot of dreams about each other, even when they were sleeping right next to each other, or they were, without, you know, on the other side of the world from each other. Um, and again, another reason why. They couldn't really get away with much when it came to hiding anything from each other. Let's see. This is with the birth times. I'm just scanning through. I actually don't usually look too much into these unless I'm really digging into the composites and everything on my other software. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to just make sure I'm not forgetting anything from yesterday that I had said. Yeah, I just think... It's kind of the same as it was with Kim and Kanye with the moons not being in proper dignity. They had these like really terrible Mars aspects with Venus and everything. And I'm going to make a video about this too, but I think Venus tends, Venus Mars like squares, if it's the man's Mars and the woman's Venus properly, again, this is, wouldn't be different for same sex, but um, it's like they'll, the square opposition, they can have all these great marriage aspects and like moon trines and and like venus conjunct moons all this great stuff going on and a lot of relationships don't have that even marriages they'll just kind of have like nothing bad nothing good so it's good to have these beautiful things a lot of marriages like that they will um uh what was i i just totally lost my train of thought i like heard something outside oh they won't feel a Venus square Mars, right, for a while. And if the moons are compatible, 
because if the moons aren't compatible and the aspects are perfect, it lasts about 10 years. But let's say the moons are in great harmony and they have a lot of great things, but they have like bad Mars aspects that are, but with something softer like Venus or Mercury and not something as powerful. Like Mercury has power, but it's more like power to just drive yourself nuts with, you know, like Mercury retrograde. It's just annoying. Nothing fires. Well, like 9-11 had bulk of, you know, the big one for four is 144 videos. So let's get that out of the way first. But, um, like a lot, a lot of things will happen. One of my, yeah. So I don't want to, I don't like to speak about those kind of things. So Mercury though is more annoying. So a Mercury square to Mars, it's just going to cause, it's going to friction break over time. Venus square to Mars, Venus and Mars are the lovers. So it's going to create a lot of attraction. But usually what will happen with Venus square Mars is one day there, and Venus and Mar Mercury are very closely related. Remember, they're usually together. Like, um, hers are a little further apart here hers is her venus is in gemini and her mars is in cancer but see his venus and mars are together in pisces uh, at about an eight degree orb so usually they're together they're kind of softer planets they're kind of the ones the other planets could put push over like you put pluto there or saturn or something or mars they're going to overrule mercury and venus so Mars might be able to get away in a square with Mercury or Venus, which is kind of being the boss for a long time. But eventually, Venus and Mercury are going to feel like, oh my gosh, this whole time. Like, with a Mercury square, I'll show you guys for the visual. With Mercury square, Mars going both ways like these two have, especially in this tide of an orb. Oh, sorry, you guys. It's, like, cut off here. Oh, uh, it was a 0.42 degree orb. It's like they could kind of railroad each other into things mentally. And it's going both ways. So it's like they could really talk each other into things. If some outside party came and was like, hey, um, Kurt, you know, I don't agree with Courtney about this. Like, I think you should rethink it. He, he might be like, yeah, I'll rethink it because there's, you know, other things. But, um, but she could come in with her Mars and like be like, no, we're doing it this way. Or he might be able to come in with his Mars square to her Mercury and be like, oh, after talking to that person, we're going to change this. But it might be a little bit of a battle, you know. Um, and this over time can wear on them. So with a Mars square, Mercury or Venus, if the moons are as great as these two's moons are, and I've seen this before. I've seen a Venus conjunct moon trine going, you know, both their Venus, they had a Venus moon conjunction and a trine with them. Um, and they had Venus square Mars and they last, it's, it can last like 20 years, but Mars will eventually get you. So if you want to be married for life, don't go with any Mars square or oppositions. Even if you have beautiful moon synastry, like these two have this moon conjunction. Now it's 10 degrees. I do think if their moons were within a five degree orb that they wouldn't have these kind of, um, Mars squares. And you're like, well, how could you know that? Because if we just fa uh, fast forward, fast forward it and Courtney had been born um, 12, 6 to 12 hours later. No, his moon's below hers. So if Kurt had been born, for example, um, six hours ish later, I would have to run the charts. His moon would have been her moon's 23 degrees. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right here. Her moon's 23 degrees Cancer. So if Kurt had been born, like, let's say approximately six hours later, his moon might have been, instead of at 13 degrees Cancer, which is still a great conjunction for the moon, it's going to, you're definitely going to feel that and enjoy it and love it. But I think it really still does have to be, like, within a five degree orb for it not to have these other aspects. So again, fully would be, you know, so this is fate. But um, if he was born six hours later, his moon might be at like 21 degrees cancer and that would mean that they may be able to overcome those mars square mercuries but still i don't know i just don't like mars square anything so i would say at the end of the day with mars squares mercury going both ways they don't have a whole lot of um even though they have some really great marriage aspects like especially saturn trine mars they don't really have the mirroring that i see going on in a uh, twin flame birth chart degree off more than courtney and kurtz a conjunction and proper dignity and then I realized that his Mars was square my moon which is just again it's like I want to idolize okay the moon conjunction so great and so rare that it, this Mars square moon or this Mars square Mercury thing can be overcome you guys but at the end of the day if it's 10 degrees it's still not really a twin flame like it really has to be within five degrees and even then you have to look like I told you I saw a couple of they, they never got together at all because they have Venus square Uranus. 
and that can happen. And if they did get together, it would have been a lot, a lot of on and off, and eventually the Venus person, which was the male, I believe, would have felt very hurt. And who knows, maybe they had a private affair, I don't know, you know what I mean, but... Um, and maybe he did get hurt by it, but because their moons were so close together. So you want to look at the moons first always, but then you have to make sure that there are no deal breakers or divorce aspects. Again, I don't have Mercury square Mars as a deal breaker. It's more of a red flag, kind of like Mercury square sun would be, um, but or a Mercury square Neptune, you know, the deal breakers are Mars square Jupiter. I always repeat these to you guys. Just Mars square Jupiter is a deal breaker. Saturn square Pluto is a divorce aspect. You know, those ones are for sure. I have like the five of them that, you know, for sure it's not going to work. Mars square moon, that's probably one now. So these two, I don't know, like the woman Venus and the man Mars, it'll just be like one day suddenly there'll be a big blowout. Like years of it underlying and then one day and it's over. You know, so it's, they didn't feel it the whole time because Venus was pretty much smoothing it over and submitting to Mars. Kind of like a moon square Mars could do. The moon could kind of submit to Mars. But the thing about moon square Mars, I'm actually going to make a video on it, so I'm not going to say it here too much. Um, so look out for that. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty much wrapped it up. I'd say that these two were very, very high-level soulmates with her north node aspects. He definitely was meant to come into her life. Um, would they have parted ways eventually? Uh, yeah, I do think that Mars square Mercury was really wearing them down as they were on the verge of divorce. So twin flames, they, it's very hard for them to come together. But I just don't, maybe it's me in my perfect world. But I, I have seen like a couple married for 40 years. It was One of my clients was actually inquiring about <laughs> whether he would ever leave his wife. And I looked at his in his wife's chart, not to call anyone out. But I deal with a lot of different circumstances, you know. Um, and him and his wife had Venus-Mars conjunction going both ways, which is, like, unheard of. Never see that, you know, in my life. And moon, I like a moon conjunction. or I think it was a moon conjunction, too. So I was like, mm, I, don't, uh, I don't think he's leaving her. But her and him had, like, Venus conjunction Mars 2 or something. So I'm like, yeah, he's definitely probably, like, attracted to you. Like, you're definitely feeling the chemistry, but he's never acted on it, right? She's like, no. I'm like, you know, I don't think he's going to leave his wife. But, um, anyways, so, uh, yeah, the point of the matter is, you know, I don't want you guys to waste your time. That's why I made the video, Are You Wasting Your Time? So, again, if you have time, I really highly encourage you, um, if you are still out there looking for your mate, to submit to the Divine Timing Database. If you're in a relationship and you're really just not sure which way to go with it, let me see here if I can get to the... Oh, no. You can go to... I think it's actually cheaper for you guys here on rotation411.com. Because I there's a lot of different... It's like, so I got to make a TikTok, you guys. All right. Uh, no one's even in here with me. It's 9.30 on a Friday, a Saturday night. Everyone's out. I might go out tonight. We'll see. Um, so Divine Timing Database right here on rotation411.com is where you want to go if you want to you know, if you're tired of online dating and, and meeting a bunch of losers and you want to meet someone you're actually compatible with, you go to the Divine Timing da Database and submit. Um, if you are in a relationship or you want to know more about yourself, you know, self-discovery, you're trying to figure out your career, your life path, your North Node, you can order your birth chart here under astrology or for relationship compatibility report. Let me see. I think it's supposed to go to... I don't even know where these go, you guys. Um, but no, definitely you can order from there. And I will be the one doing your reading. Um, but if you just have like a quick question or... No, yeah, oh, it does go. Okay. So if you go to Relationship Synastry Report and you want me to go over your um, chart like with Courtney and them, you can do Synastry without birth times. And so I'll... I'll give you like a 15 minute video going over the aspects and the moons for you and whoever you're inquiring about and synastry with birth times. I will do, um, probably it's about a half hour video. I don't know what I wrote in here. Uh, and then synastry plus composite. I will all most Libra risings will not all of them. Actually, hers is really close to Leo. It might even it's zero degrees. Leo. Actually, that brings fame. Leo Midheaven, whether that's like a career family or even traveling ninth house, like 
she, she could make family too. Like when she's traveling, she can um, really get along well with anyone she meets and make them feel like family. And you know, they they feel like family to her. She really is, can relate to people, especially when she's traveling with that ninth house um, in Cancer. So her sun and moon there, like her heart is her moon. You know, she has a, a real feel for this uh, desire for it. And the sun, it just comes naturally to her. I don't know how much she travels, but she's be a very um, natural traveler. Obviously, being in a rock band, you know, she was on the road a lot. It's just um, not a difficult lifestyle for her. Like it might be for someone who has these planets on the fourth house. Like her fourth house is in, well, it's on, yeah, this is a very creative um, Aquarius, I see. But um, say she had her IC down here in Cancer with her sun and moon there, she'd be someone who wants to stay home and have a family, you know, rather than being able to be on the road. There's so many different ways that this can play out. Um, it doesn't mean like everyone with a... Anyway, uh, all right, I'm totally rambling, you guys. I was much more clear and concise last night and to the point. But yeah, I just wanted to wrap it up here if you are an advisor i think i might have mentioned this at the beginning of the video the first day but readings.psychicsgold.com is hiring it um again i work for many different platforms this is the only platform of its kind where you can literally just go on and go live once you get a little more advanced you can do what i'm doing right now and stream from uh stream to youtube and everything at the same time see um yeah, and if you want a book reading from me, you can go here, and I'm going to start doing, the reason I wanted to connect this so bad is I'm going to try to start doing some general readings and stuff again, and come on, like, live Tuesday right now, and you decide to hop over to readings.psychicschool.com and watch me. As soon as I click out of here, and I'm just live, you can um, order a live reading from me. So if you are an advisor and you want to hop on, it's a good place to get started if you don't already have your own you know, set up or you want something for those times when your clients maybe, you know, aren't coming in and you're just kind of waiting around. I know everything kind of ebbs and flows. I work for three or four different platforms, but now I have clientele on those different platforms and I don't want to take away from the platform, you know, and them establishing me on there so I don't cross promote. But yeah, if you want to get in, you know, I like I said at the beginning of the video, I built this for those friends of mine who could not get hired on to the other platforms because they weren't just taking any more people and maybe there's, I don't know, their screening process. But if you are an advisor, this is what the back end looks like. You can come in here. Ah, I don't know what that error is. Oh, that's a different, this is a different account that's pending. Um, so this is what the back end looks like. My computer is going slow because we're live streaming and recording. Uh, I clicked down too many times, you guys. There's the buttons there. So you go live or you can just go on for uh, instant calls in store tier and price. So sometimes clients like to go for those. So anyways, um, you know, instead, because it's just more affordable than doing a full on video call. I do think the video calls, you know, they are higher priced because we have to get on here kind of like when we do live stream, um, you know, not be in our family mulling over them in my brain. But yeah, so I'm going to try to be a little more regular. I've got my setup set up a little bit better now. And I done with this big project that I was working on or two big projects that I was working on. So yeah, um, I think we're going to wrap this up again. If you are watching this on YouTube live it's going to be stitched together as part one and two as one if you're watching this on um, Facebook I encourage you to go to YouTube and go to rotation 411 astrology channel you can also always watch from rotation 411.live as well uh, yeah I have pretty much everything set up now so now I just got to get on here and actually tell you guys everything all right, it was a lot of work, but we made it this far, and hopefully I'll have some guests on soon as well. All right, I'm sending you all love, blessings, and light. It's Saturday night. I'm going to eat, and I'm going to go do something because I'm feeling a little frenetic. Um, yeah, so the conclusion is, that, so if that is those Mars aspects, and again, you just, but you are North Node contacts, which means that they are meant to come into your life for a period of time um, at least. So it's kind of like, yeah, you might have these hard aspects and you're not meant to be together for life, but they were meant to come 
and be with you to show you how to get to where you're going sort of a thing or you were meant to show them but anyways all right i'm done with my astrology rants for the evening and i hope that this all played through and good evening and good night